for their willingness as always to give praises unto the Lord. God bless them. God bless them. Singing for us today, all these blessings come from God. Amen. Our subject for today, and we'll follow with scripture as we move forward. The subject for today, following, of course, our theme for praise. The subject is, in whatever you do, in whatever you do, praise, praise, in whatever you do. Last week, the Lord blessed us, and through his word, allowed us to look at and to remember a portion of Jesus' prayer while he was in the garden of Gethsemane. Ushers, you can be seated. As we uh, reflected upon that prayer, Jesus was asking the Father to take away the bitter cup, uh, take away uh, the cross, if that was the means by which uh, mankind could be redeemed, Jesus said, if there's some other way other than the cross. But then he followed by saying, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. In other words, Jesus was saying, regardless of the circumstance that I find myself in, regardless of my cross, I'm going to do what God would have me to do, regardless. And uh, so we find ourselves in the same situation uh, if indeed we are going to follow Jesus, we learn to say, not my will, but your will be done. And that is our praise unto the Lord. What Jesus was saying in that prayer, some have called it a whatever prayer, a whatever prayer. In other words, Father, whatever you say is all right with me. Whatever you desire is all right. Whatever you want, whatever you do is all right with me. I will praise you. Uh, not my will, but your will be done. Whatever, whatever you desire. Well, the Lord receives praise uh, when we pray like that and when our praise is to the Lord in that particular manner. Whatever God wants to do. But the Lord is also saying to us not only Praise me for whatever I do. I want you to praise me in whatever you do. Uh, that becomes more personal, doesn't it? To praise the Lord, praise the Lord in whatever you do. Let us look at this passage from the book of Colossians and it will be projected for you. From Colossians, the third chapter, verses uh, 22 through 25, and they read as follow. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. 
but he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. And there is no partiality. Uh, if you'll just leave that passage there for a while as we look at it, what this is saying to us in whatever you do, praising the Lord, uh, it's talking specifically in this particular point. Uh, when it comes to our activities involving uh, vocation uh, on your job, uh, your goal in life uh, should be to love what you work at and to work at what you love. Whenever that's possible, I know that uh, you desire to do that. This past Monday, I had an appointment with my ophthalmologist. It was a little bit before 9 o'clock, and I was well ahead of time, and uh, a lady got on the, the elevator uh, with me. It was just the two of us on it, a uh, young lady, and as the door was closing and she pushed the button, we were going to the same floor, uh, I just greeted her and said, good morning, and how are you doing? And she said, well, it's Monday. And not only is it Monday, but traffic was terrible, uh, the route that I took. And I'm, I'm concerned about how the rest of the week is going to go. And by that time, the elevator door opened, and uh, we both were walking in the same direction. And uh, as she was getting ready to go into one of the office doors, she turned to me and said, you know what I said was, it's Monday, and traffic was bad, and she had another complaint or two. She said, but there's one good thing about it, I love my job. I love my job. And I say, well, I'm glad that you do. And you thank the Lord for it, that you love your job. Now, you give the Lord a good day's work. And she smiled and went on into her office door. Sometimes you're called to do a good job at a not-so-good place of employment. Sometimes you're called upon to do a good job and uh, the boss is not so great. Or uh, the salary is not what you would like for it to be. Well, we have to thank God that you do have a job. Uh, 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 for, for there are some folk who don't have one, who desire one, and who would like to have yours if uh, you indeed would give that up. Well, let's look at this passage again. We're talking about in whatever you do. The word is saying in that 22nd verse, bond servants, he's uh, not talking about slaves. There were slaves and there were uh, uh, people who were indentured servants uh, doing the writings of the scriptures. But he's talking in today's terms, talking about employees. Employees, uh, obey in all things your employers uh, according to the flesh. Bond servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Now that doesn't mean you do something wrong uh, that the boss may uh, instruct you to do. It's not talking about going against, uh, going contrary to what is right, uh, the word of the Lord. But as long as you're getting uh, uh, wholesome and the right instruction, uh, the right direction on the job, that is the work indeed that you are to do. Sometimes you may have to take a stand uh, if the uh, employer, the boss, is telling you to do the wrong thing. I had to deal with that uh, many, many years ago when I worked in the laboratory. Uh, there was a lady, uh, she was working the second shift uh, in the lab, and uh, there was only one person that would uh, work that particular shift. And sometimes she would get there late, uh, uh, there were times that uh, she would be called sleeping. There were times when she could not be found to do some of the work that needed to be done. And so uh, uh, the director of the lab uh, uh, told me, uh, Walter, I want you to tell her that uh, she's got to do differently. And uh, what I'm doing is uh, arranging as to where we can get rid of her. First
first of all, uh, I want you to tell her that uh, she's not allowed to leave the lab at any time during this eight-hour shift that she is on. Well, there was no restroom within the lab area. The restrooms were outside of the lab. And I brought this up, and I said, well, that doesn't add up. Uh, he said, but I don't want her to leave the lab, and you tell her that. Not only that, but uh, she brings her lunch, and there's no food that's to be placed in the refrigerators within the lab. We had chemicals and all of those types of things in the refrigerators, and indeed, there was no place designated for our food. If you brought lunch, that would have to be placed in some area where there was a refrigerator, some other area in the hospital. Tell her that, that she's not to leave the lab at all. And I said, well, that just doesn't make sense, and I'm not going to tell her that. Uh, in other words, I'm not going to be used to be deceitful or to be deceptive in uh, telling someone uh, to do something that uh, really is uh, unexpected uh, to do. If you want to get rid of her, there's legal ways. Uh, there are legal ways uh, um, to manifest that. And so I uh, declined to do that. And I was told, well, if you don't, you're going to be worried about your job. And I said, well, what's right is always right. And what's wrong is wrong. And I'll not be complicit in doing something that is wrong just because, even though you're my boss, I'm not going to do that just because you say so. Well, that got his attention uh, because the word of God is true. Do, do what the boss tells you to do as long as it's the right thing to do, as long as it's the right thing. So the Lord is saying here, bond servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service. The Lord is saying, now you do what is right, not just when the boss is looking, and not just when you're being observed. Uh, you do what is right at all times, at all times. I'm talking about in whatever you do. He is saying here, uh, that we do this in sincerity of heart, pleasing God. The work that you do, the job that you have, you are to perform it in the manner of which it is prescribed to please God, to please God, not with our service toward men. That means with singleness of heart that you do your job and you do it the best that you can. You do it well. Verse 23 says, and whatever you do, I'm talking about for Christians, uh, 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 Christians now, believers, whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Do it heartily. He is saying, do it with all of your heart. Do it with all of your soul. Whatever you do, give it 100%. Give what is right, 100%. Give a good day's work for a good day's pay. If you indeed are a believer in the Lord, for you're doing it under the observation of God himself. God himself. God is the one who is watching. Don't be content with doing just average work. Whatever you do, give it your best and go beyond what is average. Go beyond what is just expected to do. Some folks, some folks, they say, well, I've been ordered to pick up the paper on the floor. And they'll pick up paper on the floor, but if there's a piece of glass, they'll look over it and say, my job, just pick up paper. Whatever you do, go even beyond what is expected of you to do, you're doing it for the Lord. Think about what Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount in how we are to behave ourselves when it comes to dealing with others, when it comes to dealing with one another. You can use this same principle even on your job. When the Lord says, 
if somebody smites you on one cheek, what do you do? You turn the other. You turn the Go beyond what is expected. He said, if somebody sues you to take the shirt off your back, what do you do? You give them your coat also. Let them have your shirt and then give them your coat also. He says, if somebody compels you to go one mile, go two miles with them. Go beyond what is expected. Whatever you do, the Lord is saying through Paul, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Verses 24 and 25, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. He's talking about you, you reap what you sow. What you give, you get back. If you just give a little, you get a little. If you give a lot, you gain a lot. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Knowing that from the Lord you receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Verse 25, but he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. And there is no partiality. The Lord is not a respecter of persons. The Lord is saying, I don't, I don't, I don't just weigh what's going on uh, because of your name, uh, because of how pretty you may look. God is one who's no respecter of persons. The Lord is saying, whatever you do, right or wrong, you are repaid in the same manner. So whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. There's another passage to help us in understanding this, in giving praise to the Lord in whatever you do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, Paul is saying in this instance, therefore, whether you eat or drink, uh, whatever you do, there it is again, do all to the glory of God. Now you have to watch this first part of that verse. We don't want you to get in trouble uh, 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 there. Some might take that out of context and, and be thinking along another way in uh, whatever you eat, uh, whatever you drink, uh, in saying you're doing it for the Lord. Uh, no, he's talking about uh, 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 this in relationship uh, to how we deal with one, uh, one another. Use your behavior to glorify God and not to mislead or to hurt somebody else. That's what this passage really is dealing with. And you can read other verses that lead up to this, uh, maybe to help you get even a better understanding. Use your behavior to glorify and to praise God, rather than your behavior being used to mislead or hurt somebody else. Let your daily activities be of such that you glorify God in whatever you do, just your daily activities. All of our activities ought to be about praising the Lord, praising the Lord. That's activities for ourselves as well as uh, what we observe are activities for others. In activities for ourselves, whatever you do, let it be done to praise the Lord. We ought to thank the Lord every day that we wake up. We ought to thank him for the breath that we take. We take that sometimes just for granted. I read that we take about 23,000 breaths every day. We ought to thank God for each one that we take, what we observe and the activities that we observe and do even for ourselves. The children were singing, uh, uh, giving thanks to the Lord that we have eyes to see and ears to hear, a voice to talk, and legs to walk. These are blessings that come from God, and we ought to praise him 
in the way that we live, even for ourselves. That also means praising and taking care of ourselves. Not abusing ourselves. Praise the Lord that he's given us life. And we ought to, in observing that for ourselves, take care of our bodies. Remember now that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that we've been bought with a price and we belong to God. That means we take care of ourselves physically as well as spiritually. We praise the Lord in our daily activities in what we also do for others, for others. That means in our homes. Husbands, we ought to be the best husbands that we can be in order to please our wives. Wives, you ought to be the best wives that you can be in order to please your husband. The Lord is saying, praise him, praise God in all that we do, in our activities, even in the home. We ought to strive to be the best parents that we can be. Children, you ought to strive to be the best children that you can be, giving praises to the Lord in whatever you do. Whatever you do, that's what that passage is saying again. In whatever you do, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We exist to give God glory. That's why we were made. That's why we were created. And that is to give God glory. And we ought to do it in everything that we do. We are called to praise the Lord in whatever we do, whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, whatever state the word says that we find ourselves in, we ought to give praises indeed unto the Lord in a way that we can, in a how that we can, in a where that we can, whenever we can wherever we can, and in whatever we do, give praises unto the Lord. I'd like for you to, uh, uh, if you, I don't know if you can project it or if you can turn back to that passage of Scripture that the ministers read just a little earlier from First Chronicles. Uh, uh, I'd like to read just some verses from that as the Lord was uh, uh, using David and his psalm, talking about praising the Lord in whatever way and in whatever fashion. If you have that on your pads, uh, on your phones, I'm just going to read a few verses there where it's talking about giving praise unto the Lord in whatever you do. David's song says, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. That's starting with verse 23 in that 16th chapter of First Chronicles. Uh, 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 if you're going to turn back to that, First Chronicles chapter 16, and beginning with verse 23, saying to the Lord all the earth, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. David is really saying everything that God has made ought to praise his holy name. Verse 25, it said, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, the brothers, I think, sing that song sometimes. That the Lord, that's where that song comes from. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. What's the rest of that? If he doesn't do anything else, he's already done more than enough. You ought to praise him. You ought to praise him for that. He's great, greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. Man-made gods, he's talking about. Verse 26, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. And so we as people, as God's creation, he is saying that we praise him. Honor, the Lord made the heavens. Verse 27, honor and majesty 
are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Verse 28, give to the Lord, O families of the people. Talking about worshiping now in public, worshiping in public place. Give to the Lord glory and strength. 29, give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. That's a part of our praise to the Lord. Bring an offering, come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Yes. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Verse 31, he's moving on now from we as people praising the Lord, and he's taking it into another dimension. He's talking about the other elements that God has created. In verse 31, he says, Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad, and let them say among the nation, nations, the Lord reigns. Listen, let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let the sea give praises unto the Lord. Have you ever heard the sea giving praise to the Lord? None of us lives near an ocean, but uh, just think of the Ohio River. We're close enough to that. Have you ever been on the banks of the river and just heard the water giving praises unto the Lord as the tide comes in, as it goes out, as the waters splash against the rocks on the shore? They're giving praises unto the Lord. Let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let the field rejoice and all that is in it. Have you ever noticed if you're just driving along and watching the farm lands, how the fields give praises unto the Lord when just a little breeze will come and you'll find just the plants in the field just giving praises unto the Lord from one side unto another that's giving praise unto the Lord. He's saying, verse 33, then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord. Have you noticed when, when the wind is blowing, blowing through the trees and you can hear the whistling of the wind through the tree? Have you noticed the leaves of the tree? going from side to side and just bouncing together. The Lord describes that as the leaves clapping their hands. That's what's in the word of the Lord, giving praise unto God, for he is coming to judge the earth. Verse 34, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he's good, for his mercy endures forever, and say, save us. O oh God of our salvation, gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles or from our enemies to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. He's talking about blessed be the Lord God of all of those who believe, not just the Israelites, but of all of those who believe from everlasting to everlasting. And David closed that song by saying, uh, 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 by letting it be written, and all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. They said, Amen, because everything David said, they said, is right. Everything you said to praise the Lord for is good. All the people said, Amen, and they praised the Lord. Oh, church, that's what the word is telling us to do. Praise the Lord in whatever you do. In whatever you do. Whether it's for ourselves, whether it's for others, most of all, it's for God. Because he's watching in everything that we do. Paul says, as we close in, back in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 at this point, he said, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him.
whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, church, that's what our lives ought to be about. Uh, we ought to be living to give praises unto the Lord, whatever we do, everywhere that we go, whatever it is, do it for the glory of God. As the invitation is extended, remembering that God gave his best for us, we are to give our best to him and for him, for his honor and for his glory. The best that we can give is ourselves, our, our lives, our all in all, our hearts, our minds, our strength, our gifts, our talents, for all that we have has come from him. It belongs to him, so let us praise him by giving him ourselves. If there's anyone desiring to come to Jesus, remembering that he's already paid the debt, for your sins. His blood has been shed to cleanse you from all sin and unrighteousness. He is waiting to receive you. If you've not given your life to him, he is saying, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Let me change who you are. Let me help you to be all that I would have you be so that you can Live for my glory, for my glory. If there's anyone without a church home who desires to make this the church of your choice, or anyone desiring prayer, won't you come? While the children sing, let us stand, and as the invitation is extended, whosoever will, whosoever will, let him come, let him come.
Thank oh, you, yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you've been so good to us, Jesus. Well, well. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Glory to your holy and righteous name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we come now. Well, well. Giving thanks, Lord. We thank you for your peace, Lord. We thank you for joy. We thank you, Lord, for all things being done well. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus. Lord, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That we be found worthy to praise your holy and righteous name. In whatever we do, Lord, Establish us in the earth that we may proclaim your name to every person we meet. Let them know that there is a true and living God and he is in the world today. Let them know that because of Jesus, they live, move, and have their being. Tell them that God, who sits high, who looks low, is establishing us in the earth. And whatever we do, Lord, we do it for you. Now, God, touch these that are standing before you, Lord. Somebody need help from you, Lord. Somebody needs to be healed. Somebody needs to know that you're God and you're God all by yourself. They've been confused, Lord, but Lord, send people that are across their path and give them an uncompromising word that will clear their mind and cause them to walk in the integrity of the word of God. And some stand here today, Lord, and need a miracle. God, come in the name of Jesus. Touch them, Lord, in their hearts, God. Touch them in their mind. Touch them in their going out and their coming in and everything that their hands should touch. Touch them, God. And then, Father, when you've done what needs to be done in their lives, let them walk, Father. Let them walk in a way that every person that see them will see the Christ that's in them. And some might even come saying, what must I do to be saved? Oh God, touch us, Lord. We need you more than we've ever needed you in our lives, God. We need you right now. We need you in our minds, oh God. We need you in our heart. We need you in our walk. We need you in everything that we do. God, we need you. So come now, God. Come, Jesus. Come right now, Jesus. We need you. We need you, Jesus. We need you to walk before us. We need you to establish us in the earth. We need you to give us what we need, Lord, so that we can walk in integrity. And then, Father, we'll be able to say without a doubt, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Let the church say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Brother Wynn, it's good to see you. It's good to see you and for the decision that you're making uh, to be back with us. I'm going to let you just express that before the church. All right, all right. That's, that's, that's good enough. That's good enough. All right. All right. All right. Those who have been a part of the church know Brother William and of his uh, growth in the church, his contributions in the church, and as what happened with you uh, has happened with others, uh, sometimes uh, uh, it takes uh, that to wake you up and to cause you to come to yourself and to say, as the prodigal son did, that I'll arise and go back home and uh, make it right and start over again. That's a good thing about the Lord. He does allow us other chances and a second chance and more uh, to, to, to do it right, to get it right, knowing that in him, in the church, with the Lord, that you have others to support you and to help you and to, uh, on this road that we walk together and that we grow together, you still have a lot to offer the Lord. Uh, many gifts, many talents that were demonstrated before that can be utilized even now. All right, so we'll have a word from the officers that we receive, uh, Brother Jones, Brother William, again into the church. It's been moved and second that we receive Brother Jones uh, to, be, to have him reinstated into the church. We're ready for questions. All those in favor, let it be known by the sign of I. Any opposals, there being none, that means it's done. And you know the love that the church has for you, that we all have for you. And we want to see you grow. All right, all right. Well, God bless you now. You remember who your spiritual brother is. Oh, Kendall, okay. Well, Kendall's not with us. Um, brother Gary, if you will come. You know, Brother Gary, Brother Taylor. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Let us keep Brother William in our prayers and uh, let us help him, let us encourage him and show him the way as he grows, we all grow together and we'll work.